Hi, welcome back. Last time we talked about the difference between light that was converging, getting stronger, getting brighter with distance, and light that was diverging, getting weaker with distance, where the light rays are spreading out. And then we also talked about light rays that were parallel. In that example, there was no vergence. The vergence was zero. Okay. What we're going to do today is we're going to we're going to quantify things a little bit. We're going to um, start showing where you have greater vergence and less vergence. We're not going to apply numbers yet. We're not going to do any math. We'll do that next time. But we're just going to get into the concept of quantifying the vergence. So if you look at the converging rays on the top, let's say that's kind of an average amount of vergence. We can have a situation where there's convergence, but there's less convergence. And likewise, we can have a situation where there is greater convergence. And you can see that the amount of convergence is kind of dictated by how um, quickly the rays seem to be coming toward each other. Another way to think of it is these angles. So the greater the angle, like in the situation on the right, the greater the convergence, whereas the smaller the angle, way over here on the left, this angle is actually pretty small. It's pretty close to zero. These two rays are pretty close to parallel. So the vergence is less. The convergence is less. Okay. And then the same thing works here on the bottom with divergence. We can have two rays of light that are barely divergent. They're almost parallel. And that's a small amount of divergence. And likewise, we can have two rays that go off from each other at a huge angle. And that would be a large amount of divergence. Okay, so here's when I say more vergence and less vergence toward the left, we have less vergence where the two rays are closer to parallel, which makes sense because when this parallel, the, va the value of vergence is zero. I said I'm not going to do math, but we'll just use the number zero there. Um, and then as we move over to the right, we get greater and greater vergence, whether it's convergence at the top or divergence at the bottom, where the rays form a greater angle to one another. All right, so now for a minute, let's talk about how light is created in the world. And from a, from a kind of physics perspective, not a biblical perspective. And light is created from what's called an infinitely small point source of light. And light gets generated from this point source of light like this. Okay, so it moves out. Okay, so what we see here is light is created divergent. It starts in this tiny little point and then it emanates out in a divergent manner. So this is kind of bummer number one about optics is light is created in a diverging manner and diverging light has a minus sign in front of it. So we're going to see a lot of negative numbers, a lot of minus signs in optics, and which is a drag because positive numbers are just easier to conceptualize, easier to mathematically manipulate than our negative numbers. So that's kind of drag number one with optics. Okay, so light is created at a point source, but this is kind of a theoretical idea, right? So like if you think of it, like let's take a, a light bulb, right? If I can draw a light bulb here. Um, so we really get our light from like light bulbs and from the sun and things like that. So if you think of a light bulb, if you conceptualize a light bulb, the light is created at the filament, okay? And the filament is not infinitely small, but scientifically what we think of it as, the filament is really made up of this infinite number of infinitely small point sources of light. Each one has light emanating from it in a diverging manner. Okay, so on the left we have theoretically what's going on, and then on the right we have kind of realistically what's going on. So we never have an infinitely small source of light. So we end up saying that's a number of infinitely small sources of light next to each other. But when we try to 
scientifically demonstrate things, which I'll do in later uh, presentations, that's going to be um, areas for artifact. That's going to be places where our, our experiments don't really work 100% because we don't have an infinitely small source of light. Okay, so we have this concept that light is created in a diverging manner. So now let's try to get into the concept of how the divergence of light is affected by the distance we are away from the point source. And that's the next major concept we want to talk about. We want to link distance from a point source of light. Somehow we want to associate that with the divergence of the light. So we're going to have a relationship between distance and divergence. Okay. So let's say that you are standing here, some distance away from and D isn't diopters, let's say D is distance, some distance away from this point source of light. Okay, these two light rays here hit you. Okay, they reach you. Now, let's say we move back a bit. So now let's say we, we go twice as far back. So now we're the same person, we're the same size, but we're just farther away from the point source of light. And what happens now is these original light rays miss us. So in order for light rays to strike us, they have to be a tighter bundle, less virgence. Okay. So as our distance is getting, our distance away from the point source of light is getting greater, the virgence is getting smaller. Okay, the tightness of the bundles is getting more. And then if we go even farther away, let's say three Ds, three distance units away, it might be meters, it might be feet, it might be miles. Now we're farther away. Now even these green lights, these green light rays are gonna miss us. And in order for light to hit us, it has to be an even tighter bundle. Okay, less virgins. And we get into this relationship where as distance increases, virgence decreases. Okay, as we get farther away from the point source of light, the, the angle between the two rays has to get less and less and less. So this is drag number two of optics. Drag number one is light is created in a diverging manner, therefore we see a lot of negative signs. Drag number two is there's this inverse relationship between distance and virgence. And inverse relationships are harder to conceptualize, harder to manipulate than direct relationships, right? Direct relationship is, you know, if a candy bar costs a dollar and I buy three candy bars, I'm spending three dollars. It's a direct relationship between what you spend and how many you get. Whereas distance and virgence is the opposite. As distance gets higher, virgence gets lower. And we actually get this relationship where, let's say, our guy, you, me, whoever, moves an infinite distance away. So now let's say somehow we've gotten an infinite distance away from this point source of light. Well, now the rays of light that reach us are parallel. So if we can get an infinite distance away from the point source of light, there's no virgence at all anymore. The light rays are parallel. So, and that's it. That's all you can see in nature is you can see light that's parallel if you get an infinite distance away from a point source of light, or you can see light that's diverging if you're closer than that. You never see converging light in nature. The only way to get converging light is to bounce it off of a concave mirror or pass it through a, a plus lens. Which is nice because that means in the eye clinic, we don't have to evaluate how people see converging light, how they respond to converging light in nature. So when we check somebody's vision in the eye clinic, we always check their vision at distance and we check their vision at near. We don't check their vision a third way. When we're checking their vision at distance, we're seeing how they do with parallel light. When we're checking for their vision at near, we're seeing how they do with diverging light. 
we don't have to do it a third way because there's no converging light in nature. And then likewise, when we do a refraction, we do a distance refraction to refract them for parallel light, and we do a near refraction to refract them for diverging light. But we don't have to do a third type of refraction. So the fact that we only see parallel and diverging light in nature, it really saves us work if you think of it. Because if we also saw converging light in nature, we'd have to check a visual acuity a third way, and we'd have to do a refraction a third way. Okay, that's all I'm going to talk to you about today. Um, next time, we will start to apply math. We'll start to um, bring numbers into, into things. So thanks for your attention.